Stay tuned for more Joe Bob Briggs on Joe Bob's Last Call. Coming up next on TNT. And now, Joe Bob's Last Call and Pet Shop on TNT. So much for gremlins as Charlie Chan's number one son trods off into the snow with the Mogwai safely harnessed. Of course, they would get unharnessed again for the big-budget sequel, Gremlins 2, The New Batch, which, as far as I know, nobody liked. Okay. Although you wouldn't know it, this is the first annual Joe Bob Briggs family reunion Christmas special, A Very Joe Bob Christmas, even though we're still waiting on my mama, my Aunt Sue Ann, and Uncle Lyle, uh, my, my sister Louise, three of my ex-wives, and my cousin Conway from uh, Shakopee to show up, and everyone else has come up with some sorry excuse why they can't make it. <laughs> we were dysfunctional, I admit it. I wasn't dysfunctional, but all the people who mangled my personality when I was a youth, they were dysfunctional. But I want to remind you that next week we have Brian De Palma's comedy thriller, Raising Cain, featuring John Lithgow in more roles than you can count, and another TNT favorite, The People Under the Stairs, which we're only showing for about the 218th time. But it's Wes Craven, so who can complain? Next up is something new for Monster Vision, Pet Shop. The 1994 gym, and I use that term loosely, about a couple of aliens who land in the Arizona suburbs and dress up like Roy Rogers and Dale Evans and give a bunch of outer space animals to some kids who are from Brooklyn who are in the Federal Witness Protection Program. Sure, we've seen this story before, but have we seen it as interpreted by the feminist director of The Howling Six? I think not. Let's do those drive-in totals. We have no dead bodies, no breasts, alien pet transformation, Third eye laser zapping, head through the glass, head through the door, southwestern interior design, gratuitous Guido bodybuilders, gratuitous horny fat girl, Keystone Cop cooking sequence. Don't get your hopes up. I give it about uh, one and a half stars. But I'll be here with you, and so will the Joe Bob Briggs Tabernacle Choir. They're still here, so roll it. And Rusty, how about a song to play us off with? Maybe something simple. Deck the Hall. Something simple. Okay. We can do Deck the Halls. Okay. We even know the words. Okay, girls. Come on. <laughs> deck the Halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la. Fa la 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 la. Fa la 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 la. No, 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 no. Oh, that was lovely. <laughs> sort of. Mutants and flesh eaters and zombies. These are the denizens of the freshman dorms at the University of Arkansas, and also the same people who watch Monster Vision every week. And oh, wait a minute, I got mixed up. These are the people on Monster Vision, and we study these people on the Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com slash monstervision. Good. If you're a freshman and I just woke you up, never mind. Go back to sleep. Visit the Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. Back to Joe Bob's Last Call and Pet Shop on TNT. That's Terry Kaiser as the father better known as Bernie from Weekend at Bernie's, seen here in a rare living role. <laughs> we also saw him earlier this year on Monster Vision in the classic Mannequin 2. He's also in Offspring. He was the doctor in Friday the 13th, Part 7. Rusty, that, was that a knock on the door? That may be, that may be, be uh, Mama. Go see that, who that is. And, uh, hello? Louise! It's my sister Louise from South Texas. She, Louise, what's up, honey? You need directions? Because I, I think I screwed up after Route 210, and you, you're still down south. What do you mean, Jesus has to take care of a few things? Tell him to do it tomorrow. We got a Christmas special going on here, and why is it better if he takes care of it when it's dark? <laughs> I don't understand. What exactly does Jesus do for a living? What? I, I can't hear. <laughs> Jesus is named after our Savior. I don't care what, 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 what is that racket? Have you heard from Mama? She hadn't shown up here yet. Hello, Louise? Louise? Uh, 
No habla espanol. I don't. Do, Donde esta Luis? Hey, hello? Was that mama at the door? No, it was just the wind. Roll the film. God. Since we got no reunion going on per se, I'm trying to find out if the folks playing Mr. and Mrs. Zim in the movie are husband and wife or something. Thought that might be interesting, because they're in a bunch of movies together. Got the whole crack TNT research department on it right now. It consists of one gal on hold in the next room. So tell Lisa when she's done to come in and eat some of these red and green Fritos, because they're getting stale. My God. Oops. Forbidden TNT word. <laughs> well, the people do right, don't they? Dear Joe Bob, how much do they pay you? Whatever it is, it's... <laughs> and then, of course, we get the, the email, too. Mr. Briggs, this confirms your recent subscription to Nasty Teenage Goddess's website, and... Oh. Anyhow, there's two ways to get in touch with us. MonsterVision at Turner.com or 1010 Techwood Drive, Atlanta, Georgia, 30318. And for those of you too chicken to get involved, check out some of the strangest mail we get at the To The Editor page on our website at tnt.turner.com slash monstervision. That must be a spam message. Visit the MonsterVision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash monstervision. Back to Joe Bob's Last Call and Pet Shop on TNT. Oh, boy. Animals in cages in the movie there. PETA doesn't like that. You know what PETA is, right? People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. There's a guy in PETA who makes it his business to go into the fur departments of the big downtown department stores in New York and politely say to the rich ladies shopping there, you know how they killed the chinchillas to make that coat? genital electrocution and the rich ladies hightail it out of there and if any of the rich ladies is wearing a fur coat he'll secretly put a sticker on her back that says i'm a jerk i wear fur only it doesn't say jerk it says the a word <laughs> terrorists in neiman marcus fran drescher's biggest nightmare <laughs> you know on the other hand mary tyler moore and some other PETA folks picketed a seafood restaurant in la once because they were keeping a lobster in a special tank and hand feeding it oysters and calamari they thought it should be returned to its natural habitat in maine and rush limbaugh offered to eat the lobster and can you imagine how many lobsters have given their lives just to feed rush limbaugh anyway back to the movie I'm actually talking about the movie now instead of enjoying a sweet potato cobbler with my family because we don't have any choice. And Joe Bob Briggs Tabernacle Choir, while, while looking good enough to eat here, it isn't, isn't working out quite as I planned. So anyway, how about I just play Santa Claus and you gals come sit on my lap one at a time? We might as well do something. How about we sing? How about you sing? Well, later. <laughs> You know, anybody can sponsor a lame website contest, but very few can create a contest that is extremely cruel to the losers. That's the whole idea behind the Monster Vision Caption Contest. Try your luck, make the six-headed jury laugh, and you might win a cool Monster Vision t-shirt, or you might go down in flames and be derided as an unfunny loser who tried to compete with the big dog. Check it out at tnt.turner.com slash monstervision. We'll enjoy it even if you won't. Play the Monster Caption Contest and win a free t-shirt at tnt.turner.com forward slash monstervision. Back to Joe Bob's Last Call and Pet Shop on TNT. Well, you're watching the first annual Joe Bob Briggs Family Christmas Special, unfortunately for you. And those alien pet shop owners in the movie are Jeff Machalski and Jane Morris. And so far, our high-tech TNT research department, that would be Lisa and a library card, has found out that they're old Second City alumni, and they were also in Michael Moore's TV Nation. And we're still hot on the trail for more information about them. And we apologize for Lisa calling and waking up Jeff Machalski's kid who, uh, by the way, wasn't very helpful. And uh, on top of it, the jalapeno fritters are all soggy and cold because my loser family can't seem to get in a car and point it towards North Texas and get their hand. Oh, man. This is, this is the phone call where they say April Fools and come in the back, right? Yeah, yeah that's what it's going to be, right? Yeah. Hello? Rayburn. 
Rayburn, you old dog. How's things in Appalachia? Y'all still have that free clinic with the Brandeis interns? Woo. My second and third cousin, Rayburn. Oh. Rayburn, I can't hear you too well. R Rayburn, I know what you turn the phone around, Rayburn. You're talking into the earpiece again. <laughs> That's better. Okay. Hey, can you stop at the 7-Eleven on your way in and pick up some Little Debbies? <laughs> I'll reimburse you. <laughs> what do you mean you can't get the car started? You just calling me now to tell me you can't get the car started? You're 1,200 miles away? How long has it been sitting in the yard? <laughs> well, what do you expect after eight years? What, what were you planning on doing about tires? <laughs> yeah, well, you probably should have thought this out. Okay. Maybe next year. All right, Ray. All right, we'll see you. Okay, no great loss there. Man. Back to the flick. Hey, what happened to the gal with the rack and pinion steering that was in the choir? <laughs> oh, she said the H word. Harassment? Yeah. So you fired her, right? Yeah. <laughs> Back to Joe Bob's Last Call and Pet Shop on TNT. Okay, this movie is going nowhere in a big way, and how appropriate, because neither is this Briggs family reunion, so uh, I have an idea, actually. Rusty, why don't we raid the mailbag for letters to Santa? What do you mean? Well, I mean, half the family's canceled, and the other half hadn't even called. The jello shots are just sitting there in the fridge. <laughs> Let's break them out and raid the bag for letters to Santa. I want to see what Ernie asked for. I can't let you read mail that's not addressed to you. I have taken an oath. So take it back. It's against the law. Whose law? Come on, let's see what's in Ted's letter. It'll be fun. Uh, why don't you join the choir in a Christmas carol? <laughs> I don't really sing. Mm, yeah, like they do. Saved by the bell. Hello. Erlene, my second wife, Erlene Briggs. How's the charm school business? You're moving it from Alabama to where? Dry prong, Louisiana. Honey, I'm sure they got just as much teen pregnancy in dry prong as they do in Pickensville. White trash is white trash. I mean, I mean before they go through your school, honey. You know, you're a little late for the Christmas show here, and if somebody doesn't show up soon, I'm gonna have to let the choir sing again, because... By the way, Erlene, you got any potential suitors up there? Because I'm going broke with four alimony payments. We'll lay off the oatmeal pies for a while, just till you can get a ring on that finger, okay? So maybe we'll see you next Christmas, huh? Erlene, I think we got cut off. Hark the herald angels God. sing, glory to the newborn king, peace on earth and mercy mild. Mutants and flesh eaters and zombies. These are the denizens of the freshman dorms at the University of Arkansas, and also the same people who watch Monster Vision every week. And oh, wait a minute, I got mixed up. These are the people on Monster Vision, and we study these people on the Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com slash monstervision. Good. If you're a freshman and I just woke you up, never mind. Go back to sleep. Visit the Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. Back to Joe Bob's Last Call and Pet Shop on TNT. Boy, TNT's really aiming for that target audience on this one, huh? There are a lot of six-year-olds up right now. Very smart programming, because there's so little competition at two in the morning. Barney's not on for hours. Come to think of it, I think this movie was also written by six-year-olds. Twelve years old tops. This movie is so lame, I'm not even going to embarrass the writers by saying their names on TV. Brent V. Friedman and Mark Goldstein. 
I'm a little bitter right now, I guess, because my second cousin-in-law, Conway, from Minnesota, called during that last segment to say he can't, he can't make it. Aww. He's the one's UFO expert, says he's been abducted by aliens. I asked him while he was up there, could he put a tracer on Mama? <laughs> I lost the connection, and uh, I really hope that's her, but I doubt it. Mama? Wanda! It's my fourth ex-wife, Wanda Bodine. What's going on, honey? Where are you? You're in Grapevine. Well, thank goodness, because I got a whole case of tab here with your name on it. What do you mean? You, you can't make it? Come on, honey, we can put that little restraining order aside for one night, can't we? I mean, we'll just say you're 200 yards away from me. No, there's no law here. They'll never know. If you hadn't tried to cut off my you-know-what with that cuticle knife, I wouldn't have to get the restraining order in the first place. You, should, you shouldn't be upset about it now, at this point, and it's Christmas, and... Oh, that's very funny. That's very funny. You would have succeeded if you could have found it. Well, ha-ha, Wanda. Well, maybe you would have found it if your big old thighs weren't in the way. Oh, oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Well, you're not hanging up on me. I'm hanging up on you. Roll the film. Just roll the film. And what happened to Miss Texas pageant back there with the one octave range? Where'd she go? Ah, uh, she quit. She quit. You know, you know what I want you? One of you girls, I, I, I want you to go stand out on the highway because uh, let's see if my mama drives by. Maybe I didn't give her the right address. So one of you just go out to the highway, okay? Can you do it? You stay. Do they speak at all? <laughs> Well, the people do right, don't they? Dear Joe Bob, how much do they pay you? Whatever it is, it's... <laughs> and then, of course, we get the, the email, too. Mr. Briggs, this confirms your recent subscription to Nasty Teenage Goddess's website. And, oh, anyhow, there's two ways to get in touch with us. MonsterVision at Turner.com or 1010 Techwood Drive, Atlanta, Georgia, 30318. And for those of you too chicken to get involved, Check out some of the strangest mail we get at the To The Editor page on our website at tnt.turner.com slash monstervision. That must be a spam message. Visit the MonsterVision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash monstervision. This TNT presentation is brought to you by the new sci-fi thriller, The Faculty, in theaters everywhere December 25th. Back to Joe Bob's Last Call and Pet Shop on TNT. I love you, you love me. Something, something, family. We're two-year-old television, the best on TNT. What are the words of that song? I can... I'm surprised at the number of people who never worked after they did this movie. The director, Hope Perello. David Wagner, who plays the older brother, Charlie. The kid who plays Alexis, Sabrina Wiener. Good name, though, Sabrina Wiener. Also, the twin thugs, Nino Cerdo and Leonardo Cerdo. All top-notch actors, don't you think? And those special effects, dazzling. Rusty, what, ha what happened to that gal I sent out to uh, check on my mom? I think she left. Didn't you tell her about the Christmas present I'm giving them all when the show's over? Yeah, I think that's what made her leave. It's Wanda. Yeah. Call him back to apologize. Sure. Hello? Mama! What? Mama, where are you? Yeah, I know it's a long drive from Boxite, but oh, where are you? Okay. You and Aunt Sue Ann stopped to powder your things, and, and Lyle found a what? A slot machine. Mama, where do they have slot machines in Arkansas? The bathroom just happened to be on an Indian reservation. <laughs> Mama, I hate to tell you this, but there aren't any Indian reservations in Arkansas. The only Indians that ever lived there were the Quapaw Indians, and they trucked them over to Oklahoma in about 1875. What, what do these Indians look like? Indians with mustaches, okay. <laughs> Since when do you know how to play craps? I... Mama, do you know this is the first annual Joe Bob Briggs family Christmas special reunion? You could have just left Sue Ann and Lyle there and taken the car and Ly Lyle lost the car at the roulette wheel. <laughs> I had home movies, Mama. I have, I have Christmas carolers. I made your famous Ozark deviled ham dip with the crushed cornflakes 
And mama, who are those men? What's that noise? Mama. No, don't put your wedding ring up for collateral. What do you, mama, put Lyle on? Hello? Okay, looks like I gotta take a little road trip tomorrow. Oh. Well, the two of you want to do another Christmas song before the conclusion to this wacky comedy sci-fi flick we're watching? Um, yeah, all right, I guess. Ready? <laughs> Away in a manger, no crib for his gun. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Back to Joe Bob's Last Call and Pet Shop on TNT. And that was the great Pet Shop. They never could get those Italian accents down, could they? Sometimes they were Italian and sometimes they weren't. And even more pitiful than an Italian accent in a PG horror comedy designed for morons is the first annual Joe Bob Briggs Galdern Family Reunion Christmas Special. And it has been a very Joe Bob Christmas, hasn't it? Just like everything else we try to do around here. Oh, I don't think it was that horrible, Joe Bob. And where's the Galdern Choir? We were supposed to have a choir. Well... You don't have to snap at me. This is why people commit suicide at Christmas. The girls went home to be with their family. Yeah, so why didn't you go home to be with your family? Hmm. You kind of are my family. Aww. Yeah? I probably shouldn't admit that. Okay, well, we'll have a pity party here in a minute. But meanwhile, I want to remind you that next week when I come out of my depression, We'll have the Brian De Palma flick Raising Cane with John Lithgow playing a psycho who snatches whiny children for scientific experiments, followed by Wes Craven's twisted social statement about rich and poor, the people under the stairs. And that's it for me, Joe Bob Briggs, reminding you that if at first you don't succeed, destroy all the evidence that you tried. <laughs> now Rusty and I will sing a final carol. Oh, just the two of us? Well, we gotta do something, because we don't have a dang choir. All right, well, uh, we haven't done Silent Night yet. Okay, Silent Night. Silent and night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Round and now for my annual Christmas message. I'd like to wish goodwill to all my lonely, miserable fellow sufferers out there. May your holidays be merry and bright, and may all your Christmases be tight, if you know what I mean, and I think you do. And no matter how hard it gets, remember that Joe Bob loves you. And hey, it was no bed of roses for the J-Man either. Wooden manger, Israel in the winter. Warm country, though, that was lucky. What did he come here to do? You guys know? He came here to give us hope. Oh, Incorporate yeah. that, okay? Did you guys hear the one about the five-year-old kid who asked his mother right before Christmas, Ma, will I get anything from Santa this year? And his mother says, No, you've been a really bad boy. But maybe if you write a letter promising to be a good boy next year, he might bring you a present. Well, the kid thinks about it for a long time, and then he decides to write to Jesus instead of Santa because he figures that Jesus will make Santa bring him a present. So he writes, Dear Jesus, I promise to be a good boy for the next year. But then he starts thinking about that. He decides that's too big a promise. So he writes a new letter. Dear Jesus, I promise to be a good boy for the next month. Well, he keeps revising that letter down until he decides that he can't be good for even one day. So he hits on a new plan. Next day, he goes to church, and he steals an icon of the Virgin Mary, brings it home, and he starts writing another letter. Dear Jesus, if you ever want to see your mother again, <laughs> Joe Bob Briggs reminding you that the drive-in will never die. Rusty, do you know why Santa Claus is so jolly? No. Nope. Because he knows where all the bad girls live. <laughs> I love you, Joe Bob. I love you too, kid. No. I wasn't even going to bring it up. <laughs>